A prostate cancer patient getting radiation treatment can now have fewer side effects, such as bleeding, and that is thanks to the development of a new technique. Doctors at the National University Hospital are using what is called a rectal spacer, and that is to protect the rectums of patients from overexposure to radiation. To explain that procedure further, I'm joined right now in the studio by Dr. Ashvin Kesavan. He is the Associate Consultant at the Department of Urology at NUH. And also joining us this evening is David Peter Dowdle. He's a patient who has undergone this very treatment. Thank you, gentlemen, for both coming into the studios. Good to see you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Dr. Ashwin, let's begin with you. Take us through how this rectal spacer procedure actually works. Okay. Well, well, to explain the procedure, I've got to tell you a little bit about radiation. So radiation is really one of the very established treatments now for prostate cancer. And, and part of the radiation involves um, targeting the prostate, which is this organ here. Uh, the problem is, despite... Um, advances in radiation, we can't make that radiation zone perfect and the rectum sits just behind the prostate. It's separated by a very thin layer called a fascia. And so um, the idea for a spacer is to put a material into the zone between the rectum and the prostate mm -hmm. and what this simply does is move the rectum away from this high radiation zone and the process it protects the rectum. So that's how it works. Right, so it, it using a material, I presume, yes, that's that, right. uh, that that's doesn't... Right. I mean, you have... Is this yeah, the, so this is a sample yeah. of, of, of what we use. Okay. Um, essentially, it's, it's two liquids that combine in the syringe and then solidify into a gel. And the way it's inserted is through the skin of the perineum. The perineum is the skin that sits between the anus and the scrotum. Right. Uh, and it's inserted about five centimetres in, into this uh, peach-coloured zone. And that's where the, the, the gel is, is placed. Right, so it's very targeted, the stream, and it provides important it protection. David, let's bring in on the conversation here. Uh, you were diagnosed with prostate cancer uh, at what point. Can you tell us something about that? And, and what was the treatment that was prescribed to you at the time? Uh, yeah, I was diagnosed last um, August. Um, and, and a confirmation of a diagnosis is a biopsy. Um, so for some previous years, I'd had indications in blood tests and scans, uh, but without confirmation that it was cancer. Right. So last August, that was actually confirmed by uh, a robotic technique that NUH has, um, which is very accurate. So right. they uh, took 69 samples, mm -hmm. confirmed that it was cancer, so we could start the treatment. Right. So this was different from taking your, uh, the prostate-specific antigen tests? Th that was a part of the initial test. So the... Um, the PSA was rising, okay, um, and that was the indicator to get a scan. Right, the scan showed a, a slight shadow, mm -hmm. but it still that still doesn't tell you whether it's cancer. Oh, right. So you have to have the biopsy. Um, the old method of the biopsy was a hit and miss. Yeah, uh, the NUH have got an automated process system. Uh, they took sixty nine samples and uh, very effective. Yeah, and you got uh, your important diagnosis yes. from there. Yeah. So when the doctors told you, um, and presu presumably, were you involved in this in this specific one of the case? Doctors okay, in the one team. one in the team. Him, yeah. So when 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 doctors described this rectal spacer to you and and the benefits that it could provide, I mean, what were your thoughts at that point? Uh -huh. um, I'd already researched it, um, and it was the discussion I was going to have with Professor Edmund Chong that day. He brought it up first. Um, the results that I found were, were incredibly good, um, and, and I couldn't understand why it was even an option uh, until today, and you explained that uh, medically sometimes uh, you can't have this, uh, um, this gel. Mm -hmm. um, but for those that can, um, it shouldn't be an option. It should be part of the process. Right. I mean, it, Dr. Ashwin, when it comes to, you know, the, the, the structures in that area, you know, it, I mean, the, the human body is delicate, you yeah. know, which, whether you, you're going from, you know, top to bottom, quite literally. Talk to us about the importance of protecting that part of the body right. uh, when administering radiation therapy. You, you referenced this uh, yeah. a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's a great question. So, so the, the problem with uh, radiation, like I explained, is when the rectum gets some, some of that dose and you don't have a protecting gel in place, mm. uh, somewhere around 20 to 30% of patients may start to suffer from uh, radiation side effects. Right. And that could be as mild as maybe going to the toilet more frequently, but it can be as severe as developing ulcers 
which mm. bleed. And when this problem happens, there's no good treatment. So it can be a, a, a recurring issue even years after radiation has been completed. Right. Uh, with the introduction of, of this gel material, mm. uh, we are seeing quite dramatic improvements. In our own series in NUH, we've done maybe more than 150 patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had no patients with serious rectal ulcers. And we've had only about 4% of patients having minor symptoms once the gel is in place from 30% before. So it is quite an effective product. Gel. Yeah, quite effective. Uh, I mean, when you, when you say that ulcers and, and, and so on can develop, I mean, it, are, are you saying that the radiation therapy, if, there, if that gel were not in place, it has the potential to, to damage? Yes, it, can, absolutely so. Yeah. I mean, the way radiation works is it, it's targeted at uh, organs containing cancer and it right. causes cancer cell death. Mm. But of course, it, it's not so discriminatory and it right. can harm normal tissue as well. And if that tissue is in that, in that radiation zone, it can get affected. Right. So it's an important development, important treatment uh, option for patients. Uh, the radiation, I mean, you, you were saying, uh, David, you've been having the treatment since you, you were diagnosed in August last year. When did you begin your treatment? Uh, the radiation uh, started in um, October okay. and finished in December. So it was 41 sessions over two months. Right. So it, it, is that typical? Yeah, that's, that's quite a normal treatment course. Okay. The, the gel is usually inserted about two weeks before we start the mm -hmm. radiation, so it's in place as a protection. Right. And it dissolves in the body after six to nine months. Right. So it gives us a nice window of time to administer the treatment. Yeah. So that amount of, of, of treatment, I mean, you were saying, I mean, without the gel, you know, you can potentially get uh, this sort of, uh, you know, weakening of, of that area and so on, and then the ulcers can yep. potentially develop. Right. But so without that gel, I mean... Is that a standard amount? I mean, how quickly yeah. can damage yeah. occur after right. radiation treatment? So, so radiation has been uh, established treatment for prostate cancer for decades now. Mm. But these gels have started coming into the market only quite recently. Singapore's been doing it since about 2022. Okay. Um, and um, it, it has changed the way that uh, patients are now uh, um, uh, looking at radiation. Right. Because before this, uh, they'd be very concerned about, about these types of side effects. And, and the rectal side effect is one of the most common ones. Right. Uh, but now that they know we have this protection, mm -hmm. radiation is becoming a lot more accessible to people and more acceptable to people. It really is an important option yeah, for Yeah, I would patients. say so. I would say so. Well, thank you both for coming into the studio and talking to us about this important development. We do wish you the best. And... and the best to your health as well, David. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashvin Kesevan, the Associate Consultant at the Department of Urology at NUH, and patient David Peter Dowdle.